In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to start building your NHD Web Central website. In this video, I'll go over how to add elements to your home page, how to add elements like text, images, an MP3 file, MP4 file, a PDF file, how to add different things to your background, how to edit your site's theme. So we'll just go over all of that as I start to build a website for you and you can just see how one way to go about building a website looks. You may have another way of building the website. You may have things that work for you. You can definitely do whatever works best for you. But if you're just getting started with NHD Web Central and you're looking for how to get started, this video will walk you through some of the basics. So once you create your website for the first time, you log into your account, you say start new website, you will see a blank page that looks like this. So I'm going to show you what to do once you have this blank page. So it'll start with this body, this container, and this is the container that contains all of the elements that you add to your website. At the top here, there's a box to help you get started. You don't need to have that. You could delete that, but you can't delete this container here. Whenever you make any changes to your website, don't forget to click the Save button because there is no automatic save feature in NHD Web Central. If you try to close out of the website without saving, it will warn you that you are about to do it and remind you to save. So let's get started. We head over to this set of four blocks. These are the building blocks you'll use to build your website. So you can see here we have title, subtitle, text, quotes, images, all sorts of things that you could add to build your website. So I'm going to start with my title and subtitle. They'll automatically be justified to the left, but say I want them centered. I can click on my title, I will see this blue menu appear, and I can change it from left to center to right, whatever I want. Same thing with the subtitle. I want mine to be centered. If you want it to be bold or italics, double click on that box and another menu will appear. You can choose to bold it or make it italic. You could also use the keyboard shortcuts, cuts, control B or control I if you know how to use those. I'm going to make mine italic. And I'll make this just regular case. Okay, so I want to then add in the words that I want to be in these sections. So you can either manually type them in or you can copy and paste them from another document. I'm copying and pasting mine from another document. It is helpful to have everything pre-written in another document and then just copy and paste it here. Um, it cuts down on time when you're building your website. Then I'm going to click Save. Then the next thing I want to do is go back to my building blocks and I want to add a spacer. I like the idea of keeping my elements spaced apart. So I have my title, my subtitle, then I'm going to add a space and then I want to add a feature called auto nav. If I drag and drop that here, this is an automatic navigation bar. So this will take you from web page to web page as you continue to add pages to your website. You don't have to worry about linking pages. If you have an auto nav bar on every page, it will take care of it for you. Right now we just have the one page, the home page, but as you start to add pages, you'll see more pages here. You can change what the text says in the menu. So it will start out as a lowercase h-o-m-e. What if I want it to be all capital letters? I can change that, click save, and I can close. If I save my website and refresh, you can see here that now it's all capital letters. So we've just added our title, our subtitle, we've added a spacer, and we've added our auto navigation bar. Before I go on adding other elements, I want to add some files to my file library, and I want to play around with how my design looks of my website. So to go to our file library, we click Manage Files, and you can see here that I have no files in my file library. So I need to double click here and find the images and files on my, on my computer that I want to add to my file library. So here are three that I would like to add. So I'm going to click them and then click Open. And now they are in my file library. Any file, a, meaning an image, a MP3, an MP4, a PDF, 
anything you want to show on your website must remain in your file library so that the website builder knows what to pull to show on which page. If you delete something from your file library but you uh, want it to still show on your page, it won't because we no longer have that file in the file library. So just know that this is where everything is pulling from. So now that I've added some elements, I want to play around with my design of my website. So to do that, I'm going to go up to my palette, and this is my site theme manager. I can use a preset theme, so if I want my website to be greens, blues, yellows, pinks, I can choose one of these preset options to make my website various different colors. If you'd like to set your own theme, you can come over here and you can just pick from the drop down menu um, what you want your font color to be, your font family to be, your background color to be. Oh, what about this? Do you want your background to be an image instead of a color? If so, you'll see here that I have uploaded two images to my library already. And I called this one Prison Bar's background image because I want to use that one as my background image. It is helpful to name the files things that are easily recognizable so that when you go to do things, you can easily pick like, oh, I want this for my background or I want this for a certain page. So it's helpful to name your files something useful to you. Image style. Do you want it to cover your background? Do you want it to not repeat? Do you want it to repeat? In various ways, you can click these and save and see what they look like. I like the cover option because it will cover your full background just with one image. And then we get to the container color. So that's this thing in the middle that contains all of your building blocks. Do you want it to be a color? You could choose here what color you'd want it to be. Or do you want it to be transparent so you can see the background image through the container? Up to you. You can keep around playing with this until it looks how you want it to look. Then down here, this is your menu. So this is that auto nav I was talking about. What color do you want the font to be? What color do you want the background to be? You can play around with it here. Maybe I want my font to be white, my background to be black, my menu item to be black, and I want it the menu to be centered. Once I make all my changes, I'm going to click Save. And look here. So I have my auto nav i set the background to black and i set the text to white so that looks nice i have my background image here and my container you can see is transparent if you wanted instead the container color to be a color and not transparent you could come back into your site theme manager and do something like this i personally think i'm going to uh, make my container transparent so that you can see through it like this. Alright, then I'm going to continue building my website. So now I want to add a spacer because I just like that look and I then want to add a primary source quote. So I'm going to drag and drop that here and I am going to add my quote. I have it in a separate document so that I can easily just add it to my website like this. And I don't want it to be bold, but I do want it to be, I, eh, I want it to be straight. And then my source credit, I'm going to add, and I have that in another document as well. So I'm just double clicking here, Oop, not deleting it, redo, redo. And there we go, adding it like that. You can even do this whatever you'd like to do. And then you can choose to make it all bold. You can make it italic. If you just want this section to be italic, you could do that. Um, and then save. This is the default text size, but if you want the text to be bigger or smaller, click on your box and you'll see some more settings appear on your right. And the font size is automatically set to medium. But what if I want to make it 20 or 21 or 22 you can play around with the font size i'm going to make it 20. then i want to add something else to my website so i'm going to go back to my building blocks i'm going to add a spacer then i want to add an image of johnny cash 
So I already have that image because I uploaded it earlier. If you needed to upload an image from your computer, you could double click here, open up your computer files, and then add it to your website. So I've added my image here, and I need to add my source credit down here. So I am going to add that here. And I don't want it to be bold. I want it to be italics. Johnny. All right. So now I have that. I'm going to click Save. Looks like my J did not stick. There we go. Save. Perfect. So now if I were to preview my website by clicking this little eyeball icon, this is what it looks like so far. Looks good. Then I want to go back to my building blocks and continue to add other elements. So I am going to add a spacer underneath. And then I'm going to add maybe some music because Johnny Cash is known for his music. So I'm going to drag and drop an embed MP3 file, which is a music file, underneath my image. Then I'm going to double click. And I already uploaded it earlier, so it's already ready for me in my file library. I can click here to change the size. I can make it the length of the page, whatever I want to do. Then I'm going to go back to my building blocks and add a text box underneath my MP3 file because that is a source, so I need to add a source credit. So I'm going to copy and paste my source credit here. And I don't want it to be bold. I want it to be italic. And I want it to be centered like that. Then I'm going to come back to my building blocks again and continue to add some more elements. So on a website, we have all sorts of things that we need to have on the website. A lot of students like to add their thesis statement on the home page. So I'm going to add that here by dragging and dropping a text box onto my website. Maybe another spacer. All right, and in my text box, I'm going to copy and paste my thesis statement here. And then I want this to be centered. And I, I like that it's all bold. And then I can come to my font size and make it 25, because I want it to be big. Then click Save. And the last thing that we're going to add to the home page are the required home page elements. So on the home page, it's required for you to have your name or the names of the students in your group, your division and your category, how long any multimedia is on your website, the website word count, and your process paper word count. So add all of that, I'm just going to drag and drop another text box underneath my thesis statement, and maybe another spacer for good measure. And then I'm going to add in my required home page elements. And I want those to be centered. Then I'm going to click Save. If I preview my website, you can see I have my title, my auto nav bar, a primary source quote, an image with the source credit, an MP3 with a source credit, my thesis statement, and my required home page elements. So far it's looking good. The last thing I want to do is add a new page. So when I go to Page, I'm going to say Open Manage Pages, create a new page, and I'm going to say Becoming Johnny Cash. And I'm going to do the same thing in both of these boxes. Oops. And then I'm going to say Add Page. Then I'm going to save, refresh, and now I have my home page and I have my second page. And now you can see I have two pages here. To edit that second page, just come into your page manager. Oop, it says some changes haven't been saved. So I'm going to close that, click save, come back here, and now I have another page to start with. So I can follow the same process of coming to my building blocks and adding the various elements to this page as well. So that's how you'll go about starting your website, adding elements using the building blocks, 
and you'll carry that through until you create all of the pages you need for your site.